Well, here we go with step eight of how to answer a P2 exam question in 10 easy steps. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I would argue there is nothing easy about a P2 exam question, but hopefully the techniques that I am showing you will make it easier, as I've mentioned. Uh, part C uh, was uh, a real challenge for me to record that in just a few minutes was was a great challenge for me because there's I mean there's half the syllabus in part C just in part C there's half the syllabus the great thing about that is it gives you lots of freedom of expression the difficult thing for me is trying to you know jam that into a five minute video which is almost impossible to be frank um, step eight should be a little bit easier for me because there's less going on in part D. Step eight, you see, is doing part D. So first of all, I'm going to do part D knowledge, and that's going to be step eight, and then step nine will be part D answer, my recommended answer to part D. Uh, the knowledge in part uh, D is uh, pretty limited, uh, very technical, but pretty limited. It's understanding pensions accounting or pension accounting. There are two types of pension and therefore two types of pension accounting. Uh, there's the defined contribution pension scheme and the defined benefit pension scheme. And first of all we'll talk about the defined contribution pension scheme. Um, defined contribution pension scheme is, is just literal. Um, I, I employ you and I define what contributions I will put into your scheme. Uh, the accounting for this is, is very simple. Um, as suggested there, the cash that I pay, as I pay it, I just recognise the cash coming out of the bank and into operating costs. And they're basically just accounted for on a pay-as-you-go basis. Um, exactly the same as employees are accounted for themselves. So there's, it's a pretty simple form of accounting. Uh, most people associate pensions accounting with defined benefit pension schemes because that's the more difficult one. Um, this much more complicated deal is much less common, but obviously it's the one that gets examined in the exam. It involves making an employee a promise to give the employee a certain amount of money when they retire. This then generates the obligation and hence the liability. So it's uh, a pension accounting driven by a liability. I promise to give you a certain amount of money when you retire, and that gives rise to my obligation and liability. A portfolio of investments that is built up over the years to pay them, and hence the scheme also generates an asset. So I make a promise to pay you a certain amount of money when you retire, and therefore that generates a liability, and then I save up to make sure I can pay you off, and that saving up gives a asset. So what a, uh, um, a defined benefit pension scheme is, is the combination of an asset and a liability. It's driven by the liability really, but we have an asset which we try and match, I try and match to the liability. But the truth is that they're separate. So as uh, the, li um, the liability normally goes up, um, I suppose as people retire, it goes down. But what one tries to do when one is administering a defined benefit pension scheme, one tries to keep the asset at roughly the same height, at the roughly the same value as the liability. But the liability, you know, can change all over the place and the asset can change all over the place. So actually getting them exactly matched up is almost impossible in real life. Uh, coming back to the accounting, uh, accounting, so we end up accounting for an asset and a liability because we have an asset and a liability. And that's it. That is the pensions accounting knowledge that you need to answer Kate Part D. So ch turn to June 2010, have a look at the question Kate, see if you can do Part D on your own.